Kiryu Sentai Junrager released in 1992 for the Nintendo Family Computer and I just realized there were about 40 plus reviews in 2022 and this is only the second NES slash Famicom review of the year. The first one I did was Dragon Warrior 2 back in January. Holy balls, that's actually some restraint. Anyways, the Junrager game on Famicom, I'll be honest, this one was a bit of a lot down. I wouldn't go so far to call it a bad game per se, but compared to the game based on this series' predecessor, the comparatively superb Shoujin Sentai Jetman, Jew Ranger feels like an inferior, less polished game. Probably for the best that this did not get an American conversion and the closest thing to a mediocre Mighty Morphin 8-bit video game would be on the Game Boy. But I digress. In any event, Zhu Ranger, published by Angel Bandai and developed by Arc System Works, yes, the same company that brought you Guilty Gear decades down the road, I suppose. So this is a largely single-player game of the side-scrolling platform variety. You assume the roles of each of the five Zhu Rangers tackling their own individual levels, so no, you don't get to play as Dragon Ranger, and you also don't get to choose your Rangers to play with, which is kind of lame. Anyway, the format for each level is as follow. Each ranger begins with their blaster weapon, and along the way they can collect dino coins that slowly fills the uh, counter in the bottom. Once that's filled, it will restore your health, unless you already have full health, in which case you gain an extra life. Each level also has two doors you can enter. One at the halfway point in which your ranger is gifted with their signature weapon, which, save for Terror Ranger's bow, trades in distant shots for pure power of the melee variety, slaying most monsters in a single blow. The final door resides at the end of the level and is where you'll face off against the boss. You beat the boss and you clear the level, upon which you're given the option of playing a mini game of sorts to earn an extra life, which you can accept by pressing A, or you could skip by pressing B, which gives you this weird password gimmick before moving on to the next level. You're given three lives, and if you die during a level, you restart the level from scratch. However, die during a boss battle, and you'll just respawn during the boss battle, and continue on with that until you eventually lose all your lives, and the game ends with no option to continue, so try to memorize them weird passwords using free Frames of Red Ranger animation. Oh wait, I should say Tyranno Ranger animation. Uh, who cares? Okay, so the mini games. There's three of them. One is a quiz game where you answer multiple choice questions. The other is a sort of Megazord Pong where you and Dragon Caesar play Pong and whoever drains the other of health wins. Finally, there's Lammy Catch where Megazord and Lammy play hot potato with a bomb and try to keep it away from you when it eventually blows. You can not only play these separately, there's an option to do that, but both the Pong and the Catch games can be played with a second player if you fancy that action. So there is some multiplayer action in this Zhu Ranger game, just not the action that's worth playing and anyone would want to begin with. Zhu Ranger is what I would call a functional platformer, but not a very satisfying one. In terms of the basic mechanics, it works fine. Controls are fairly tight and responsive with the rangers moving fairly quickly, and their jumps being floaty but somewhat manageable. The level design is fairly straightforward with the occasional tricky bit here and there, but nothing I would call too frustrating. Really, the bosses are more of a challenge than the actual levels, and even then, the ability to respawn on the spot sort of nullifies that challenge unless you play really, really sloppy. I mean, in terms of the loosest interpreting of the series plot and condensing some 50 plus episodes in one short five level Famicom game, it gets the bare minimum done without a hitch. And it's a fairly short game, an average player could probably beat this in roughly half an hour. Not even. It's a weird thing, because the play mechanic, the basic mechanics aren't bad, but it's also somewhat underwhelming. This is the show with the fighting and the giant robots, the Super Sentai show, and while Jetman wasn't one of Natsume's all-time classics, it did get the job done. A good action game, so-so robot action, which you don't really get here unless you count the minigames, which I don't, and I can understand not doing proper mecha fights here because Jetman's fights were somewhat limited, and that game came from a more proper developer on the NES. Zhu Ranger, on the other hand, is just a so-so platformer where you're shooting at random monster things that may or may not resemble creatures from the show it's based on, and your weapon upgrades, which go from a long-range blaster weapon to a short-range weapon that hits harder, doesn't feel like a huge upgrade except for Terra Ranger's bow, which shoots arrows. That's the pink one, by the way, for those who don't know. 
And I think that might be part of it too, now that I think about it. Each level gives you a specific ranger to play without the option to switch to other characters. And this has been a pet peeve of mine with the later Power Ranger games that grace the Game Boy Advance, because you want to have that option to pick your favorite ranger and have them go through all these levels and such. And such an option could have helped this short game's limited replay value. Because once you're done with this game, and like I said, it only takes you about half an hour at most, there's nothing left to do and nothing to really entice you to come back for more. The mini games are more of a distraction than anything, and it's worth noting that while you can win extra lives, you could also lose lives during these games and eventually get a game over, which is kind of bullshit. It's happened to me a couple of times when I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but whatever. And the password system that they have going on? Why this format? It's not terrible. It's manageable only because it's three parts. And honestly, you could fumble your way with the different frames and come up with a working code without much trouble. But why this? I'm curious about that one. For about five seconds, then I stop caring and move on to something else. For, and for what it's worth, Zhu Ranger is not a bad looking game. The Rangers all look the same. They share the same sprite, but it looks all right. As do some of Bandora's gang whom you fight as bosses. Some of the lower grunts are kind of hit and miss, but the levels look fairly decent. And the intermissions are fairly well drawn. You know, I suppose, and some of the mini games look okay, I guess. I mean, slightly, you know, one question I have is, is Dragon Ranger supposed to be one of the good guys at this point because he has the evil sword and not the dagger since you got Dragon Caesar in here for the Megazord Pong or whatever it's called? I'd ask why you couldn't play Dragon Ranger in any of the levels, but quite frankly, five levels is, well, yeah, quite frankly, I don't think it would have mattered anyway, so. Audio-wise, you've got a decent little rendition of the Zhu Ranger theme on the title screen, but the rest of the game has a couple music tracks at most. And while the tune that plays during the side-scrolling bits is alright, hearing that tune for five levels straight means it gets tiresome after a while. Not only that, but the rest of the game's melodies are somewhat uninspired and bad. Sound effects are kind of there, but the annoying sound effect that plays during cutscenes as the text is typing out is indeed annoying and my brain hurts listening to it. Overall, Kiryu Sentai Zhu Ranger for the Famicom is slightly mediocre fare, but nothing offensive, I guess, I suppose. It's a fairly straightforward side-scroller with a couple side games for a lark, but not one that'll keep your interest for too long, nor is it something worth going out of your way to play. I'd say just stick with the Mighty Morphin stuff we got around here since those are far better games, and I'm not just saying that because they have more bits. Even on the Famicom slash NES front, you could do much better than this game. Go play Jetman, that's a better game than this.